welcome. I'm Louise Watt, and here's what happened this week. Taiwanese manufacturing giant Foxconn unveiled its latest electric vehicle at its annual Tech Day. And this year, there was an unexpected passenger. I was there as well. The boss of Foxconn makes an entrance in what he hopes will drive a new area of growth for the company, an electric vehicle. And in the passenger seat, a surprise guest at Foxconn's annual Tech Day in Taipei, the CEO of artificial intelligence chip designer NVIDIA. This is an ideal car for a young couple like Young and me. <laughs> and we call it Model B's, which stands for beauty and beast. Okay. And it runs like well, a beast. Which, which one are you and which one is, am I? <laughs> last three years, Taiwanese electronics giant Foxconn has ventured into the EV business. The company is best known for making Apple's iPhones. But in November, it plans to start mass producing an EV for the first time. This family SUV in partnership with Taiwanese car maker LuxGen. Foxconn says it has more than 5,000 pre-orders and it will be on the roads in the first quarter of 2024. And unveiled this year, the Model N, its first cargo van prototype EV, with a range of up to 250 kilometers. Foxconn doesn't want to produce its own branded EVs. Rather, it wants to take orders from car makers and mass produce vehicles on their behalf just like it does with electronic devices for Apple and other companies. But analysts say it faces an uphill challenge. Foxconn is the 800-pound gorilla that is trying to enter a market that they have absolutely no experience in. So the degree of difficulty for Foxconn already just to build mass-produced uh, EV units for another client is challenging enough, but then to mix that in another two or three clients, uh, it seems uh, like a very daunting task for them. This year, cars weren't the only thing front and center at Foxconn's Tech Day. Foxconn and NVIDIA's Huang announced a plan to build artificial intelligence factories, powerful data processing centers that could help build cars and scale up into other industries. The users of the smart uh, EVs, uh, no, smart cities and uh, smart uh, uh, factories were constantly producing tokens. And those tokens are fed into the AI factories and process, process day and night, creating intelligence. Foxconn, already the world's biggest contract electronics manufacturer, is showing it wants to be in the driving seat when it comes to future technologies. And its ambitions extend to its electric vehicles. Foxconn says the latest EV prototype, this cargo van, will be mass produced. But crucially, they haven't said when. Foxconn has yet to persuade a traditional global car maker to partner with it. Finding their next Apple, an Apple for the EV industry, is going to be their real test. Alex Chen and Louise Watt in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Athletes from Taiwan are in Hangzhou, China for the Asian Para Games. The team of 94 competitors flew out this week ahead of the game's start on Sunday. They'll be competing in 14 sports, including badminton, shooting, swimming, taekwondo and wheelchair fencing. The Asian Para Games follow on from the Asian Games that finished in Hangzhou earlier this month. Taiwan placed sixth overall. From sports to diet, this week it was revealed that meat has overtaken grains in the typical Taiwanese diet. Sally Jensen found out why. A vegetarian's paradise, no more. Taiwan used to have the world's third highest rate of vegetarianism, thanks to a long tradition of Buddhism and Taoism. One in 10 people here used to not eat meat. But now the trend seems to be shifting. Taiwanese people ate more meat than rice or any other grain last year for the first time. 
On average, most people's daily energy intake came from animal protein containing just under 422 calories, while grains accounted for around 417 calories. Chickens saw the biggest leap, dethroning pork as Taiwan's favorite meat. Taiwan's Department of Animal Industry says the increase is because of a growth in gym culture. 就是因為平常都有在吃雞肉或魚肉,然後也是盡量在運動之後就是多補充蛋白質,這樣子,然後但是先尾或水果就也會跟著一起。But there is concern that a growth in meat consumption may contribute to widespread health problems. 紅肉的話,它容易造成我們的就是心血管疾病的一個風險上升。Higher meat consumption also contributes to the climate crisis, with animal agriculture being the second major source of greenhouse gas emissions. 氣候變遷也是變成一個很很很及時,我們馬上要面對的問題,大家都可以貢獻,那個貢獻就是你要吃,從這個蔬食的多多選擇蔬食開始。for a country whose staple diet has long been grains and veggies, the rise in meat consumption may come as a surprise. But with more young Taiwanese people exploring modern, global lifestyles, Taiwan's long-standing vegetarianism may become a relic of the past. Howard Zhang and Sally Jensen in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. The Taipei 101 run-up race came back after a three-year break. Our reporter Bryn Thomas was there to talk to athletes about their high hopes for the event. And they're off. And with that, Taiwan's most famous running event is back on track. Taipei 101, Taiwan's tallest skyscraper, is marking its first run-up race since the COVID-19 pandemic. And athletes here are happy to be hitting the stairs again. This year's event was smaller than previous ones. Fewer people were allowed to join, and organizers did not send targeted invitations to star runners from abroad. But that did not stop them from sprinting to sign up. The 3,500 spots were booked in less than 20 minutes, and several famous runners flew in to compete. Completing the race means scaling 91 floors or 2,046 individual steps. And with a total distance of just 390 meters, it may not seem like much on paper, but for many, it's a tall order. These runners are getting ready to run to the top of one of the tallest buildings on Earth. And while their runs will be timed, most are just here for a challenge. But a few have eyes on the top spot, and if they break a record, they could win up to 6,000 US dollars. Top stair runners like Australian Mark Bourne, Japan's Ryoji Watanabe and Hiroshi Kato and Malaysian Saul Wai Ching were among those lining up. And while each of them finished with standout times, it took a lot out of them. And what drives these people to push themselves so hard? あの、すごいこの競技の魅力なんで、今最高です。どうかな分かんない。あの、今までの自分の過去の自分には勝ったと思うんで、それがすごくま嬉しいです。Ryoji <笑> went to Nabi and ended up placing second. The top spot went to Seo Wai Ching. He rocketed to the top in just a hair over 11 minutes and 40 seconds. But he's not one to rest on his laurels. He's got his eyes on the upcoming Tower Running World Championships at Taipei 101 next May. Next year will be the World Championship, so I have to come here this year just to get used to the stairs, because the stairs here is way tougher than any other buildings around the world. While some athletes are already eyeing bigger targets, most of today's runners are just happy to make it to the top and to see Taipei's most famous race back in stride. Alex Chen, Sandy Chi, and Bryn Thomas for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's biggest international art expo opened its doors this week, and in the spotlight, young artists who are bringing together tech and the traditional. Our reporter Reese Ayres took a look.
exploring substance, style, and cyberspace. The Taipei International Art Fair is back and bigger than ever. Featuring works by over 140 artists from Taiwan and abroad, this annual expo showcases young talent from the contemporary art scene. While some artists are using more traditional techniques, such as oil paintings and calligraphy, some others are exploring a more modern approach. Taiwanese artist Tuan Mu is giving visitors the opportunity to fully immerse themselves inside his art using virtual reality. Other artists are showing works that tell personal stories. Wang Yuqing was in New York during the COVID pandemic. She depicts the discrimination she faced there. Uh, the Chinese mask. More than a modern art expo, the event is a platform for creativity and cultural exchange in the Asia Pacific region demonstrating the ever-evolving nature of art and celebrating the young trailblazers at the forefront of the scene. Eason Chen, Yvonne Yang and Reeses in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan's outlying islands close to China are home to endangered Eurasian otters. As Sandy Chi now explains, they face habitat loss and pollution. Playful, cute and increasingly endangered. These Eurasian otters live on the Jingmen Islands, Taiwan's closest point to China, and they are facing an uncertain future. There are less than 200 otters left on Jingmen, while a recent survey done by the Taipei Zoo shows the population grew from 78 in 2020 to 162 in 2022. The number of mature otters dropped indicating they are dying early or leaving the islands for nearby China. For years, Jingmen was a frontline military outpost. But as relations with China improved, the soldiers moved out. The islands quickly developed. The civilian population has more than doubled in the past 30 years. And with development comes destruction of the otter's habitat. In 2023, Jingmen has recorded six dead wild otters, with the latest one found in September. That's why Jingmen's roads often have signs warning drivers to slow down and watch for otters. To help prevent accidents, the local government has set up underground pathways so the animals can cross safely, keeping them off dangerous roads. While that can help keep otters safe, it's not enough to address the shrinking population. Otters are at the top of the food chain in wetland ecosystems. That means, once the environment is unbalanced by pollution, they're one of the most sensitive and vulnerable species. Despite all the threats the otters face, Jingmen still supports one of East Asia's largest Eurasian otter populations. And if action is taken, their decline can be reversed, ensuring these creatures live on for future generations. Alex Chen and Sani Chi for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching. Here's what happened. Finally today, we leave you with more images of the Art Taipei Expo. I'm Louise Watt. Have a great weekend and see you next week.